Go. Hi, everyone. It's Dr. Sas Malavi. I just had a great show with Digging In with Matt. He's a genius, knows all the right questions to ask. I think you guys are going to love the show. All right, everybody, welcome back to Digging In with Matt Rosenthal. As always, I've got an amazing, amazing guest today. He is going to be, I mean, so interesting. I think you're going to love what he has to say. The topic that he's an expert on and that we're going to really dive into is, is something that touches everybody and, and every family one way or the other. Um, his name is Dr. Sass, uh, Dr. Sassu Malavi, and he, wow, where to start? And so he's a man behind the revolutionary cookie diet. He's going to talk about that. What's unique about him is he discovered a way to help people lose weight and be healthy, but on top of that, gain energy improve all your uh, overall health and your quality of life, like all of that in one, one shot. So, I mean, he's, he's a superstar. So before we get to him, I want to say one more thing. He has a why, like, why is he doing this? Why was this his passion? He went through his own experience with weight. He went through his own experience with being unhealthy and getting himself to a place where he can speak now to what it's, what the journey is. How do you go from here to there? So long intro, but Dr. Sass, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you. How are you, Matt? Pleasure to pleasure to see you. I'm doing great. And first of all, why this is such an honor for me and why this is going to be so much fun for me selfishly is I mentioned to you off camera, like I have a passion for health and fitness. I can't say that I can relate to, to having a weight problem, but I can say that I know so many people that have, and I know the struggle. And from there, from what I've heard, and, and to be able to speak to you and have you really dive into this, we're going to help so many people today. Um, so I'm grateful for that. And I thank you for being on today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, we could start in a lot of places. Uh, anybody that, that looks you up right now is going to discover that you've done so much. You have these, these phenomenal programs. I don't want to start there. I want you to build up to that. Take me back to the beginning, maybe childhood, like where this all began and what your life was like and, and how it all kind of materialized for you. Can you take me on that journey? Uh, absolutely. So I was awesome. uh, born, I was born in Iran. Uh, there was a very large Jewish community in Tehran. And we basically, uh, my father was uh, smelling the, what's going to happen in the air. And he decided to move us to Israel. And we lived in Israel for uh, about six, seven years. Uh, my whole family is split into real estate people and doctors. The real estate people, my father's side, doctors on my mother's side. And, um, and in Israel, I went through the Yom Kippur War. I remember uh, walking in the street and Yom Kippur going to, go, go, going to the synagogue. The siren came on and the Syrian bombers were coming over. The first time the Syrian bombers made all the way to Tel Aviv. They got shot in the air and landed in the, in the ocean actually so the Israeli plane following it, I never actually showed it, the attack. And that kind of, you know, made me very, very scared about life. And- uh, How old were you? I was at the time I was, um, so it was, uh, I was like 11, 11. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> and then my father and mother decided to immigrate to Canada. And in Canada, uh, I ended up uh, going to medical school uh, because I followed kind of my, mother's family footsteps. And also I was always interested in medicine. I always loved medicine. Uh, although believe it or not, my father always tried to talk me out of it. Uh, Wait, did, <laughs> your father mother, was a doctor? Did you say that? No, my father was a real estate guy. He was the real this estate was, side, okay. He was, he was always pushing me out of medicine and I wanted to go to medicine. And my mother was pushing me into medicine and I really enjoyed it. So uh, I went to uh, University of Toronto, uh, went to medical school there and uh, did my postgraduate, my uh, Final medicine and emergency room training at McGill University in Montreal, and ended up living in Montreal and working in Montreal in a whole bunch of different emergency rooms. And uh, I started gaining weight actually the last year or two of medical school. And by the time I was uh, five years out, I was forty pounds overweight. Um, working in an emergency room, uh, uh, you know, forty pounds overweight. And at that time in Canada, I know that they love to talk about the Canadian healthcare system being great, but uh, that's a myth, but we can get into that in another conversation. Uh, that's interesting, I was the, by the way. 
I was I was the only doctor in the hospital at night. So the emergency room doctor would run the emergency room, the ICU, and all the all the floors. So if anything happened on the floor, uh, you would be called. So there would be a cardiac arrest in an ICU. The ICU in that hospital was on the sixth floor. I couldn't use the elevator because, you know, I didn't want to get stuck in the elevator. And I would run up the stairs. And by the time I got out of the stairs, I would be so out of breath to the ICU that I couldn't run the code. I couldn't say, you know, epinephrine, defibrillate, you know, all those things. I actually had for the first minute, the nurse in the ICU used to kind of have, you know, to run it for me till I caught my breath again because I was so fat. And then... Um, that was one event that really, I, I, you know, uh, crystallized how fat I was or how overweight I was. Wait, Doc, and can I'll you pause it. there for one sec? I have a question about that. Sure. So you were, I'm not doing the math. You were, you were 20, 26, maybe? I was, uh, no, I was uh, maybe 27. Yeah, 27, 28. So 27. Yeah. I, I, you're 40 yeah. pounds overweight. But I put that in perspective, like, uh, how tall are you? I was, I was at the time I was six foot. Now I'm five eleven. I lost the inches. I got older. Yeah, I was, uh, I was six foot, and I was two hundred and forty four pounds. Okay, and what should a six foot person male really be like a healthy male? Uh, you know, it depends how muscular they are, but anywhere between one eighty on the low end to you know two hundred if they're really muscular. Okay. Uh, uh, I, uh, for me, it should have been in the one ninety range. I would have been comfortable. So you're so carrying would, an extra 40 to 50 pounds. You're running upstairs and you're a young guy. Like you should be like, yeah. no problem. Yeah, I'm a young guy. I mean, I'm functioning normally, but by the time I got to the ICU running upstairs, I was so out of breath. I couldn't, I couldn't run the code. I couldn't, you know, I was breathing. I couldn't talk. They're, they're looking at so you thinking, and they're saying, wait a minute, who's the patient? <laughs> right. Well, no, yeah, exactly. You come up to the ICU and you're supposed to look at a patient and then you're supposed to say, okay, give him, you know, one milligram of epinephrine and, you know, lidocaine, whatever drug we're going to give or, you know, increase the IV fluid or get the defibrillator ready. We're going to defibrillate the patient at 220 joules. I couldn't say that. And uh, thank God that, you know, the nurses um, on the floor, especially in ICU, was so efficient that, you know, they ordered, they would set up to me and, you know, kind of know what I want. Uh, and then after a minute, I would catch my breath and I would, you know, be able to function. But it was very embarrassing. Um, and uh, I also about that minute could be critical to somebody's life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why sh doctors shouldn't be overweight and they shouldn't smoke. Show's over. That's a message. <laughs> um, OK, I'm sorry. I keep interrupting you, but I have so many questions. This is this is so interesting already. So you're 50 pounds over 40, 50 pounds overweight. You're 27. Okay. You're, you're highly like relied upon. You're the only person there. The emergencies are coming in. So now you're like, okay, right. something's, I need to think about this. Right. And uh, so I basically, you know, this was in, uh, you know, at the, at the end of the, it was in the beginning of the 90s and the uh, epidemic of obesity was just starting. And I was starting to see it in the emergency room. I was seeing, you know, young men, typically it was a man who in the 30s who were obese, who, you know, 300, 400 pounds. We did not see that in the 70s. I wasn't practicing medicine in the 70s. But if you look at pictures from people in the 70s, you can't find, like if you look at a beach in the 70s, you can't find one overweight person in that picture. You know, you look at uh, pictures of uh, in the 70s, people in a concert, in a rock concert, there's nobody overweight. You know, that, episode, that epidemic started, you know, as we introduced, you know, high fructose corn syrup and, you know, everything got bigger, supersizing. And the fast food and the American, uh, mainly the American consumer eventually went on all over the world, just started getting a lot more calories from, from sugar and our sugar consumption women. And, um, and I was seeing it in a year. I started seeing 35 years old, who were 400 pounds coming in with a heart attack, who, you know, I would have to intubate him. And they were so fat, the next was so big. It would be, you, it would be very difficult to intubate. And the older guys in the ER, uh, who were, you know, in the 50s and 60s, used to tell me, oh, I don't intubate those guys. You got to do it. You know, they're too, they're too, you know, they're too hard. And no kidding. Because they were so fat. And, uh, and you know. Uh, You're talking about putting a tube in their throat. Yeah, I put it in throat yeah. in order to give them, you know, to ventilate them. I remember one, one particular guy, he was in an Italian restaurant with his wife. He was 35, collapsed, um, came to the ER, no pulse, no breathing, blue. 
and uh, you know, I, I, as soon as I put the intubation tube in, he vomited all this pasta all over me, and um, he he died of unfortunately. I had to tell his wife, you know, who was young, with uh, the whole family came. You know, his, his parents came, his kids came, the only other, uh, an Italian family, and you know, very very close knit. And I had to tell this this family, this thirty five or thirty, I forget how old he was exactly, died suddenly, sudden cardiac death, which is. 50% of the time, the first time people find that they have heart disease is with sudden death. They die. You know, so very few people, you know, 50% of people just drop dead from sudden cardiac death. So, But at 35 years old, I mean, now yeah. you're talking like, yes, well, that, that makes sense. But if a 35-year-old, yeah, the was percentages of people at 35 that are dying of a heart attack, that, that's uncommon, no? Not anymore. Not so you much. Know, the obesity of with the obesity epidemic, it's it has become. I, I almost want to use the word common. You know, people are getting uh, stents and bypasses, and people are getting sudden cardiac death in the thirties. You know, these people are fortunately are getting you know three, four, five hundred pounds. Uh, you know, uh, I had a stent put in me in forty four because I had a, a cholesterol of a mouth and I was overweight. You know, but I was lucky. I got some pain. I got some discomfort, and I went to a stress test and they discovered that I have this, you know, beside the fact that I was overweight years before that for many years, and I used to eat a lot of garbage, and, you know, it caught up to me. And at the time, I was already thinner, uh, but I still needed a stent, and thank God, I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost 60, and when I was, you know, 44, I had a stent put in me, so I could have died of a heart attack. Bring, I want to hear more about that. I want to I'll just come back a little bit. So you're, you're, I think we left off. You're in the hospital. You're 27. You're running. You're seeing all these people come in. You're starting to see like there's a pattern of heavy people. Right. You're talking about the 70s, which I, I it's so true. I mean, I, I was a kid in the 70s, but I can tell you we didn't see a lot of overweight people. And now we're looking back. That you're right. That was about the time when when the food manufacturers everything became sugar, and and then we right. begin to move on in time, and the kids become more sedentary. Right. And then the, the generation changes. The parents are, be, are, are, um, are growing up only knowing eating unhealthy. It's like now it's becoming like a, a, the way of the country has changed. Right. But, but I do see a wave going back, thank God. In the last couple Good. of years, I really see, especially younger generation, you know, there's a lot of people who are looking into food and more critically, there are a lot of people going to becoming vegan or vegetarian, which I believe is a great way. I, I try to be vegan. I've been I've tried to be vegan about ten times in my life. Every time I fail, I've been now vegan again for about three to four weeks. I hope I keep it going. Uh, but um, that means no meat, right? That means no. Yeah, no meat. I eat eggs and I eat fish, so I'm not a you know I'm a, you know I'm an octolacto vegan. So I eat fish and meat, but I mean fish and and, and eggs. And I do drink. I don't drink milk because I just don't like it. I like oatmeal oat milk a lot, but um, yeah, I try to stay away from meat and, and, and meat products. Yeah, if look, if we were all able to be vegans, a heart disease would be unheard of. Uh, you know, societies that are, uh, have a lot of veganism in them have very, very little heart disease. There's also some benefits to, um, you know, brain degeneration, all the different Alzheimer's and those diseases possibly related to that as well. Inflammation uh, make from the food. Exactly. Yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head. So yeah, uh, too much food, sugar, meat uh, is inflammatory. Fat tissue is extremely inflammatory. And if you can bring down, so so all these diseases are inflammatory diseases. Um, and and so basically, so basically that's what happens. And I was becoming, um, I wasn't a diabetic, but my blood, my blood sugars were, were getting higher. And that's when I really panicked and started on my weight loss journey. Eventually, you know, meeting up with it, you know, and coming with a cookie diet. But I went through a, a lot of, you know, some good programs. I did, I did Weight Watchers when it was, you know, when it was hard. And it was, it was, it worked fine, but I was just, it was difficult. It was too much preparation. I did a whole bunch of other programs that didn't work. I actually went to Harvard to see what programs they had. I did some training at Harvard, which I really enjoyed in weight loss. And then I 
I went to a whole bunch of weight loss doctors across the country and spent two or three days with them when I was doing my biatric uh, certification training. Um, and, you know, I kind of picked up all the fun ideas and what can be done and, and, and we came up with the idea and I came up with the idea and I met a doctor who, who also was using cookies for weight loss and put a whole bunch of different programs together and came up with a smart for life cookie diet. Okay. This all happened. So you, you had this realization and then you went on this journey where you did this research and you were, you were trying to stop, solve the problem for yourself. And then as you did it for yourself, you're saying you ended up coming up with a program. Correct. Yeah. Cause I couldn't, I really uh, found that I would lose the weight and I would gain it back again. And I wanted something a little more sustainable. Now I can start off by saying that there is no program that you can do that will keep your weight off forever. That doesn't exist. Everybody at some point is going to start gaining weight. The real trick is once you lose the weight, as soon as you start getting some weight, to jump back on a program that works for you and to add regular exercise with it. You know, it's very difficult to maintain weight if you're not exercising regularly and you're not once in a while, you know, cutting your calories, which a way that works for you in order to get your weight back. There's no magic formula that keeps your weight up forever. It doesn't exist. If anybody tells you have a program that once you do it, you lose your weight forever, that is BS. It doesn't exist. And I tell all my patients who come to me for weight loss, there's a chronic lifelong program. At some point you will start gaining weight. And it's the trick is as soon as you start gaining a little bit of weight, knock it off again right away. And I've been successful in keeping that 40 pounds off me, you know, for the last day. I'm 60. I guess I lost them when I was in the mid 30s, so 25 years now. You never, you never thought when you got into medicine that you couldn't have foreseen that that was going to be your destiny, that you were going to have such no. a niche, which has such an impact on people. I mean, you're talking about you're changing people's lives so in such an extreme way and their families. <laughs> Yeah, we had we had we had millions of people who who've done a program, and you know we've had we've had um, uh, and I have some people uh, that you know have been eating our cookies for the last twenty years. You know, it's unbelievable, including me and including my wife. Uh, I I probably eat the cookies almost every day to replace at least one meal. So when I get hungry and I don't have anything around, or I'm I'm feeling a little bit fat, I gain a little bit of weight, and I'll you know and and then. Um, I'm, I'm going to come by and get some cookies after the show. I will mail them to you. I got, I, I got to lose about six pounds. That's, that's all I need to lose. Yeah, well, it's easy. <laughs> it's it's uh, 10 days on the program. You'll be there. <laughs> I'm, listen, I want, I, hold on. I'm making notes here. I want to come back to the cookies. I have four questions I, that I thought of. I don't want to interrupt you. One, uh, as things we were talking about. First of all, when somebody is, by the way, thank you for telling us the, your story and taking us on that journey and why you have such an important, cause you know and and, and purpose in your life um what what is it that somebody either if somebody doesn't want to be that 35 year old guy that doesn't make it or 40 years old is what couple things can we say to anybody that they can do just as a normal way of life aside from different programs and diets the basics of what you do to make sure you're you're healthy and, and and with your heart and with your cholesterol and things like that so um eating Eating a very large, uh, mostly vegetable diet is, is key. Keeping sugar content to below 30 grams a day, which is quite a bit still, you know. That is what we were eating, you know, in the, in the 50s, you know, in between the 1920s to the 1950s, 60s. We were eating about 30 to 40 grams of sugar a day. Now we have much higher. We have two or 300. I mean, you can have one, you know, one latte at, you know, a local coffee shop that has 40 grams of sugar, that's your sugar for a whole day. Terrible. And so green leafy vegetables, uh, a lot of them, um, keeping your sugar to below, you know, between 30, below 30, if you really have to go to 40, you can, depending how big you, they are. Getting regular exercise every day, something that you like, something doesn't that you're not suffering. You know, some people go to the gym and they love it. Some people go to the gym and they suffer. If you go to the gym and you suffer, you shouldn't go to the gym. Find something else you like. There's a lot of other things. Like I hate the gym. I like swimming. I do some sports, and 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 that's what, and, and that's how I get my exercise. I hate getting on a treadmill. Uh, as soon as I'm on a treadmill for five minutes, I can't wait for the you know for it to pass. And I don't care what's on TV. I don't know why. I just can't. I I just can't do it. So 
those are increase your fiber intake. A lot of people are missing fiber and fiber has been taken out of our diet. So if they eat a lot, you know, to supplement it uh, with fiber to get, to get a good source of protein that is, uh, you know, somewhere for a woman around 60 grams a day to 80 to 90 grams a day for a man uh, of a good source of protein that is lean. Um, and, and that is the general outline. Now, how they do that, you know, they can do it with the healthy, healthy proteins. Uh, a lot of uh, vegetables have proteins in them, believe it or not. Um, uh, uh, 100 calories of kale and 100 calories of meat have the equivalent amount of protein, calorie per calorie. No That's kidding. It. Yeah. yeah. Kale has that much protein? Yeah, 100, 100 calories to 100, 100 calories of, of meat have, have the same amount of protein almost. But uh, you're making me like Google fun. while I'm talking to you now. I got I to look that up. You, you feel That's free. Mind blowing. Yeah, but it, the kale is going to be much bigger volume, though. You know. Sure, and the fiber and, and the green. Yeah, uh, and how wow. you get all the benefits. Yeah, Jeez, and it, what you got to do is you got to you know you got to like vegetables and grilled vegetables. In my opinion, taste better than meat if you do them correctly. And you, you got to take your time to to you know grill your vegetables and and do and. and and, and make them the way, spice them in the way that you like them, that you're going to eat them because they are delicious. Wow. Yeah. Look at all that protein in there and vitamin A, C, K. Yeah. Kale. Pretty amazing. There's a lot of protein and there's a lot of vitamins, A, C, K uh, in the kale. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. So vegetables, yeah. low sugar, exercise, fiber, protein. Like that's a great place for somebody to start. What tests would somebody want to get if they wanted to see baseline? Do I have any issues that may be going on? Yeah. So uh, beside the regular blood tests that all the doctors do, very important to do the uh, inflammatory testing, CRP, as well as a lot of doctors don't measure with metabolism. And the hemoglobin A1C is critical as well as cholesterol fractionation, including LP little a. So we don't just look at your good and bad cholesterol, within your bad cholesterol, you can have a worse and a super worse cholesterol. And your LP little a is also a very critical one. That's the one that I have, for example. But a lot of, for example, a lot of people are pre-diabetic um, should be taking a, a, a drug called metformin, for example. Okay. And metformin, for, when I went to um, the first my anti-aging um, conference 20 years ago, I was talking to all the doctors and they're all taking metformin. Then why are all these people taking a diabetic drug? What are they, crazy? And I started doing the research and uh, they told me, no, it actually helps you prevent getting diabetes, but also has an anti-aging effect because it inhibits an enzyme called tel telomerase which basically makes your telom telomere shorter telomere. and that's how your yeah. cells know that they're aged. So I started taking metformin about 20 years ago and now I would say I put all my patients who are pre-diabetic on metformin. That's a prescription a drug? Drop, a prescription drug used in diabetes, yeah. Telomeres, I, 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 does that have something metformin. to do with, with, the with your mind and, and your thinking and, and um, inflammation? The, the telomeres are actually uh, at the end of the DNA. They're basically like almost like uh, extra strands. And as the cell ages, they get shorter and shorter and shorter, and eventually get shorter enough that the, the cell knows that it, it has it's it's time for that cell to die. And uh, the theory is that that's what controls aging. Uh, metformin prevents that shortening from happening as fast as it should. Um, there is there's a great meta-analysis made by Harvard. It's called uh, Is Metformin the Magic Drug? And uh, it's a meta-analysis of a whole bunch of studies. And it's a great one for if, you're, if your listeners want to look it up, Google it, um, and ask the doctor to prescribe it for them because it does make a huge difference both on weight loss, sugar, and anti-aging. Uh, and, it's, and it's very inexpensive. For example, here you can get it for free at Publix, but you need a prescription. Are there any... I, I'm so intrigued right now. Are there any side effects? Yeah, some people get some GI side effects, you know, a bit of uh, diarrhea. A lot of women like that because they're constipated naturally anyway. <laughs> it's a big problem because they're not getting enough fiber. Uh, so Does that pass? Uh, it just passes, yeah. Especially if you start a very slow dose and you increase it. So typically I start my patient on 500 split. I have him split the pill, one in the morning, one at night. 
and then I bill them up to a thousand. And if they need, I bill them up to two thousand. I personally take two thousand a day, but um, most people that I start them off, it's five, it's five hundred, two fifty in the morning, two fifty at night. Unbelievable. This is gold, right? Here. I, I've never heard of this, but this is this is this is huge. Um, okay, so we keep talking about inflammation. So the other, so if you eat a diet that even basic with vegetables and low sugar and you're exercising fiber and protein, inherently your inflammation is going to reduce because you've taken out the things that are causing it. Correct. Especially exactly. sugar. Especially, yeah, yeah, right. The, the sugar is the bigger cause of inflam inflammation. You know, when I went to medical school and they were teaching us, if you get a diabetic or pre-diabetic, you know, you put them on insulin and they get better. Well, they don't actually get better. They get sicker. Because all you're doing is you're pushing this sugar into the fat tissue. The muscles become insulin resistant, right? That's what, ins that's what diabetes type 2 is. It's insulin resistance. Really. So that person is eating a lot of sugar. You're giving him insulin to get rid of the sugar in the bloodstream. You're pushing them into the fat cells because the fat cells are still accepting sugar. The muscle cells are not because they're resistant. So you just make them fatter and sicker. The treatment for diabetes type 2 is calorie reduction, sugar reduction, not insulin. Now, thank God that we have metformin and we have the new drugs that came up uh, lately, the, GL, the, the GLP-2s that are working in a different mechanism. But insulin, I use insulin only in emergency settings. Somebody comes into my ER, you know, in a sugar of 600 that I need to get the sugar down or they're going to go into some kind of an acidosis. I use insulin. But with my own patients, I try to take them off insulin. And I'm literally taking thousands of patients off insulin just by getting them to lose weight, cut the sugar. I, I do it with the cookies because that's the easiest way to control the intake. And then they start feeling better because once you reduce the insulin, you reduce the fat load because then a new hormone comes in that they produce called glucagon that takes the sugar and the fat, converts it back into the, in, into sugar and puts it back into the bloodstream to be used as energy. So when I put somebody in a thousand calorie diet, they're not really getting a thousand calories. They're still getting 2,500. They're getting a thousand from what they're eating and 1,500 is coming from their own body stores. But if the, if the program is designed oh. correctly, they will not have any calorie deficit because they will get all the different calories coming out of the fat stores. And if they're doing that, they're losing a pound a week. Yeah, pound a pound. Yeah, and with me, they typically lose, you know, two and a half pounds a week in the first couple of weeks, and then it slows down. Um, and by the way, I know you do finance, but that's also the solution for a whole um, um, supply chain and inflation issue. Reduce insulin. You want to, you want to get really, yeah, you want to get really fascinated right now? I'll yeah. blow you away. Tell me. You know that we have one point six trillion dollars in fat stores in our people's body in this country. 1.6 trillion dollars yeah, in fat. So Tell all, me, yeah, all if we have about 200 million people are overweight, okay. And if those 200 million people begin to fast one day a week uh, for 16 hours and not eat food and use the fat stores in their body to release that energy, they will put less strain on the supply chain. They will also put less, you know, less strain on the supply side, decreasing inflation. And they will release. So they will basically every day they're releasing a lunch and a breakfast, let's say, at the stomach, about $20 a day of fat stores that are coming out. We solved our inflation. We solved our supply chain issue. But there's 200 million people. And I'm starting a movement for people who are overweight to start fasting one day a week because I believe it will be good for the health. It will be good for the country. It will stop the supply chain into inflation. So let's do it, America. Let's all of you are overweight out there. And even of you who are only six pounds overweight, like Matt, you can fast one day a week and save your health in our country. But just for the record, I want to lose six pounds, but I'm perfectly, I, I'm, I'm going to meet you in person. You'll see I'm in good shape. By the I, way, I you saw, I can see you in shape already. You solved another problem. You didn't even know it. This, the, the title for this episode is going to be Fat Loss Solves Supply Chain Issue. That's going to be the title for this episode. No problem. Okay, so you read my mind because the next question I had, and I wanted to bring up, um, I have an app that I use called Fast Tick, F A S T I C. Mm -hmm. So I do intermittent okay. fasting every day, at minimum of 14 hours. If I have an extra cup of coffee and I can push it, I'll go 16, 17 hours. I, I, I know why I do it, but uh, would you mind sharing all the benefits of intermittent fa or of, of, of fasting? Why you just brought that up? Right. So, 
So when I went to medical school, fasting was a big no-no. They used to tell us, oh, it's dangerous. People get electrolyte imbalances and they can drop dead. Don't let your patients fast, da, 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 da. And I was against fasting till about six or seven years ago when I started seeing fasting studies related to anti-aging and longevity. You know, when they take caloric reduction on, on mice, um, uh, they live longer. Um, so there is a stress effect that fasting causes that actually gives you protective genes. The best way I can explain it is that if you take a mouse and you give it a lot of radiation, it will die. But if you take that mouse and give it a small dose of radiation over time, it actually lives longer than a regular mouse because that, uh, that toxic shock makes you open up protective genes. The same thing happened, happened with vegetables. Vegetables have mycotoxins in them that make us open up protective genes. So fasting has multiple effects, you know, from calor caloric reduction, you're just not eating as much, so you're going to use your fat stores, right? That's one. But it has something that goes beyond that, which is the kind of a shock to your body that makes you open up protective genes that I believe, and I believe that the studies that are showing it, makes you live longer and healthier, decreases inflammation, because one of the big things that people don't understand is that the biggest inflammatory response in your body is an immune response. The gut in it has a lot of, of nerve cells. It's actually called the second brain, right? And it also right. has a lot of immune cells, right? So it has a brain and it has a whole immune mechanism. Everything you eat, your gut has to decide, is it good or is it poison, right? And that the first thing that's going to touch it is your immune system to make sure that this thing is healthy and let's let it in, or the thing is not healthy, not don't let's not let it in and make, make right. If you eat a lot of unhealthy stuff, you just build up your immune system, and you get an inflammatory response, which is what inflammation is, right? So if you eat less, your gut doesn't have to do this all day. You know, it, it doesn't have to go to the immune system and all this nervous because there's a lot of communication with the gut and the brain with all this gut brain hormone that we're now aware of. So fasting solves that problem. And fasting in our case will reduce supply chain issues and inflammation because we won't be consuming as much. We're all gonna get lighters. The car's not gonna have to carry as much weight. You're gonna save you know, a few cents on gas here and there, but when you do it on 200 million people, that comes out to a lot of money. That is a lot and of money. I think and, and I'm not even talking about the health uh, cost benefits of, you know, ICU beds and stents and diabetic treatments and drugs that are costing $6,000 a month for people who are overweight right now. I'm not even talking about that. All the, all the auto, autoimmune diseases that are related to, you know, the way people eat. So I think that if we, America begins to fast one day a week, you know, on a permanent basis, you know, we do it forever. It's not a big deal. We will, we will be able to solve a lot of our problems because we are not going away from hamburgers. We're not going away from French fries. We're just not. People are going to keep eating them no matter what. But so if people, you know, make that up by fasting one day, which isn't a big deal, they're willing to sacrifice one day, they can splurge a little bit more the rest of the week. If people want to really eat healthy, then they should go the way I said before, you know, with, with, with vegan, possibly eating the cookies, you know, just eating a healthy way. But that's a fast way we can fix the issue really quickly. Because uh, Americans are rich. They got lots of money in their stomachs. <laughs> that's good. I, I don't know if I have the term right, but were you talking, um, I, I learned it from the app that I use called autophagy, where your, your cells uh, turn on themselves. Maybe they, they clean themselves. Yeah, they eat, eat themselves, yeah. That's a very, I learned about it from, from the app I use, but I, I, you know, everybody should know about this. They should, yeah. And, and just so 16 hours is a, is a, when you say fasting, like 16 hours, you're not saying for the whole day, it's like for, for two, like two thirds of the day. Yeah, but, but you know, eight of that you're sleeping. So it's really right. an eight hour fast, right? Right. So yeah, let's say somebody sleeps six hours, so it's, a, so it's a 10 hour fast. It's really not a long time when you do it. No. So I also do intermittent fasting. And uh, I don't do it as well as you. I think you do it religiously. Um, but I think that if, if people can do a 16 hour fast, which is what I, which is the one that I recommend, 
And now especially make sure that you're drinking a lot of fluids and you, you know, you're getting your white electrolytes. It's not, it's not very complicated. If you have medical issues, you can seek medical attention before you start the fasting or maybe a doctor will induce it. But if you're healthy, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do it. And um, the health benefits are just huge. And if you can do it twice a week, you know, you'll probably really, really feel good and add exercise to it and the right state of mind. Don't let stress get to you. You should be doing fine. The last one is the hardest part, the stress. Yeah, but stress is good. People understand that stress is actually a good reaction. It's actually the way your body's protecting you against, uh, against, uh, there's a great uh, video on TED called Make Stress Your Friend, which probably all the listeners should go and look at. Uh, it just talks about how healthy stress, if you treat it healthy, if you have a positive attitude about, basically what it says, if you have a positive attitude about stress, doesn't affect you. It's the negative attitude that you have about stress that affects you. I want to thank you for saying that because I, I, I happen to thrive when I'm in stressful situations. I, I don't know. I love it. I do. I love it. Something like that. Yeah. It's like an adrenaline rush, but uh, all right, intermittent fasting. So thank you for talking about that and inflammation. So this is all connected. Like it's not, if you, if, if, if one could get to that, maybe some discipline or, or, or um, even the courage to try to do all of these things, these are not complicated things. It takes time. It takes time maybe to settle into a new routine, but eating the way you, you mentioned, um, certainly the medication you mentioned, which you said was metaf- metformin, metformin correct. Um, get maybe certainly getting some tests just to make sure that you are healthy and, and being proactive. You know, like you mentioned stress tests and, I've had a test last year where they do an ultrasound on your neck. Very good. Yes, call it all. Uh, a calcium score, uh, the right. stress test with the, the, you know, they put the, I had all of that done and they found, and the reason, by the way, was because my cholesterol combined was like 300 or something. It's been wow. like that for 20 years and I've never taken a medication. And I was arguing with the doctor, not, I mean, not literally, but I was like, well, if I don't, if you prove to me there's something wrong, I'll take a medication. Other than that, I don't want the drugs right. in my body. So he sent me for every possible test and the results all came back that the calcium score was like a 20, but that's not very high. Yeah, it was very good. It should yeah. be zero, but everything else, zero, they found uh-huh. nothing anywhere. And he goes, you still should take the, the statin. I said, why? <laughs> I'm fine. But anyway, I'm taking it. But the point is, I well, learned a I, lot. I, I, I actually would disagree with him. If, you, if your coronary arteries are clear and you have no plaque, I'm talking less than 30% because everybody has some, some plaque. I don't think you need to stop it, but anyways. Uh, you I, know, I, I agree with you, and I did I it. Just too well, maybe enough. I did. I take four of those a day, but I did it because I was think, I'm, I'm thinking about, well, he scared me, like, you know, thinking about my children, about my like, right, I don't want to be that statistic, so fine, I'll take the drug, but I, I don't think, I don't think I need to, but there's so many people out there that do, and that's, I'm, that's my, that was where I was going with. There are people that need to adopt the diet you're talking about. There are people right. that need to, um, step back and realize if they talk to somebody like you, this is, it's not that complicated. It's just some lifestyle changes, some mindset change and, and understanding like, you're right. It didn't, it wasn't like this 50 years ago. It, it, it's not, it doesn't have to be like this now, my next, and now I want to get into the cookies. <laughs> so, oh, actually, I think I have one more question. So all right, one more question real quick. Cal- caloric intake so there's there's debate i've seen some people say that's not the solution some people say you, you have to reduce calories to lose weight there's no other way around it some people say how 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 could you lose weight if you don't reduce your calories right it's isn't this just math yeah no cal, you know there's there's people who say that calories aren't like the calorie from from a sugar is not the same as the calorie from protein and they're right so a calorie so, but you got to reduce calories and you got to get the calories from the right source. Because if you reduce your calories, but you're eating only sugar, you're not going to do well. So you got to reduce your calories and you got to reduce your calories significantly to make a difference. Otherwise, it's too slow. So, like a deficit. Yeah, like a deficit, like a serious deficit. So let's say somebody needs 2,500 calories a day. And I, on a, on a medical program, what they do the program with me, I wouldn't bring them all the way down to 800. So I create a 1700 calorie deficit in the body, but they're getting all the 1700 calories from the body fat. It's 1700 calories of fat is being released every day. So then they're, they're still getting 2,500 calories, but you're getting 1700 from the body stores and they're eating 800. How do they deal with the hunger? The hunger while it's happening. The, the, the cookies are appetite suppressing. So... I would say 60 to 70% of the patients, uh, of the clients get 
appetite suppression of the cookies. Some of them we use natural uh, fiber to suppress the hunger even more. Uh, some of my patients will go on um, on drugs, on medical drugs, either it be injectables or uh, uh, I'm a believer if you're overweight and we need to lose weight, you can also, if you need to give fentramine, I do give fentramine. So what does that do? It's an appetite suppressant. You remember Fentran? They used to be yes. Fentanyl and Fentramine. It was very yes. dangerous. So right now, the Fentramine part is the safe part of that model, of that drug. So we still use it. It's been around for like 35 years. It has a very long track record, more, 45 years. Basically, so we use it as well. And right now, there's the new GLP-2 injectable. The problems are the very expensive. Uh, Ozempic, Trulicity, all the very expensive, but they do work for weight loss, you know? But for okay. those patients, you have to be diabetic or pre-diabetic. So you they do. Give it so you do need to have a caloric de deficit. How do you calculate what somebody's base? Like, how do you know where the starting point is? Like, how would you say to me, okay, you need two thousand calories a day? So, so what we do is we put you in a machine called a body uh, composition analyzer that will give us an idea how much muscle you have, and how much, uh, you know, muscle stores, water stores, and from that I can extrapolate what you need. Because you see, a lot of people think they can go to the gym and burn five hundred calories and lose weight in the gym. But it's very difficult to lose weight with exercise only. Because you go to the gym, you burn 500 calories, but then you get hungry, you get home, you eat 600 calories and you never, you know, you never make it up. So if you look, yeah, I mean, too. I mean, <laughs> so, so what happened is that when I went to, when I first went to my first biatric course, um, there was a brilliant doctor there who's been doing weight loss for, for he passed away, unfortunately. For many years, the first thing he told us is stop telling your patients to exercise. Get them to lose face first. Once they lose the weight, get them on an exercise program after. If they're already exercising, keep them exercising. But if they're not, get them to lose weight first. And I thought, eh, I can do it with exercise. And I couldn't. I would go to the gym, burn five hours. I would come home, I'd be famished. And I would end up eating. And I would, and I would just keep, I built some muscle. Yeah, it's great. But I never actually lost significant weight. The only time I lost significant weight when I did serious calorie reduction. Uh, sometimes I even decrease my exercise a little bit so I'm not pushing myself too hard as I'm doing caloric reduction and then bring up the exercise. But don't get me wrong, exercise is key to long-term health and success. Uh, but if people are, you know, if people are somebody's 300 pounds and I want to move out to 200, I put them on a caloric reduction program for quite a while. And then I had exercise slowly, you know, starting with walking, light weights, and then I had the cardiovascular later on. I think I had all my curiosity questions out of the way. All right. Tell me about the, so, so your program, you, you talked about, I'm, I'm sure all these things you mentioned are things you, you implement, but what, what, what's the cookies? What's special? Tell like, I'm, I'm intrigued. I want one. So, so basically, you know, uh, the human body was not designed to, me to eat three meals a day. The human body is designed, the, the reason we eat three meals a day is because of, you know, the armies and the 17 and all the institutionalization. They wanted to feed people three times a day. And that's how we got ended up with three meals a day. Really, if you looked at the way that we are, were designed, you know, primitive man used to walk around the field, you know, he'd find a little egg, he'd put it in his mouth and eat it. You know, find some berries, put it in his mouth and eat it. So really, our body are designed to eat small amounts Every couple of hours. Like grazing. As, as, yeah, grazing as we forward yeah. and graze. Exactly. That's the word, grazing. So what we did is we came up with a cookie that has a mix of the proteins, a little bit of sugar, uh, a lot of fiber, you know, a lot of other healthy ingredients, you know, some minerals. And the amino acid mixture that we have in them, which is the protein mixture, is appetite suppressing. And people eat that every two, three hours as they're grazing six times a day. And it gives them all the protein, all the nutrients that they need. And then they eat one meal a day, whether they do it for lunch or for dinner, we don't care. They can even split it, which is six to 12 ounces of a lean protein, depending on how big they are and how much, how active they are. And then we want them to eat a very large green leafy salad. So if they want to eat a bucket of kale, a bucket of lead, they're allowed. It's unlimited amount of green leafy vegetables. And the protein has to be lean so they can have, you know, fish, chicken, and I even let some of my patients at Buffalo steak, for example, because it's a, it's a fairly lean steak and it, you know, it's an omega-3 steak. So there's a lot more omegas in it. I, I'm a big believer in fish. And I'm, I'm actually a big believer in soy protein. I believe there's a lot of, of 
myth against soy, but if you look at societies that are the healthiest in the world, in Japan, who have very little cancer and have very long life, they eat a very large soy-based diet. Um, and I know people argue oh, the modified soy, they don't know. Yeah, as long as it's non-GMO soy, you, you, you're pretty healthy. Um, so, 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 so that's how the cookies come up. They're a unique tool that is very scientific in order to make people lose weight, eat small multiple meals, and control the hunger. And they're actually delicious. You know, the oatmeal cookie and the chocolate cookies are very popular, they're very tasty. And you developed this, right? So this yeah. came from you. And is there anything in it? I, I'll use myself as an example. I, I tend to stay away from any kind of like protein bars or things because I, I, I have a sensitive stomach. Is there anything in it that uh, like uh, these artificial sweeteners or for somebody like me, I might have a problem? No, there's not. We don't use any artificial sweeteners in our cookies. They're all, everything is natural. Uh, in fact, people with IBS who I put on a diet actually tell me that the IBS gets a lot better. Oh. I think part of it is the cookie and part of it is the caloric uh, reduction. Um, so, uh, no, it's a completely okay. uh, natural and uh, non-GMO. Uh, I think 75% of the ingredients are organic. Uh, it's not 100% organic or 80% organic just because some of the ingredients are not available and organic. But it's all non-GMO. And how long does it suppress your appetite for? It, it, it varies between individuals, uh, but it's around two to three hours until the next. Oh, nice. Typically, yeah. Okay. And it's the, the way and, they have to come. This is something that is part of your program. This isn't something that's in the stores. No, yeah. You can buy it online. You can buy it on Amazon. We oh, you have can. Our, okay. Yeah. yeah Smart for Life cookies are available on Amazon. They do very okay. well. And they also have a super fiber in them uh, that I, uh, about 20 years ago, we developed a super fiber with another major manufacturer who basically expands in your stomach and um, acts seven to eight times versus the regular fiber. So one gram of the fiber in our cookies is worth seven to eight to up to nine times, depending on which study you look at, of a regular fiber. So that causes uh, sugar absorption to even get more delayed because there's a lot more fiber. Okay, now as part of the pro, so if somebody were to come see you, uh, for two questions, one, do, do people need to come see you in person or do you work with people um, remotely? So we have two types of program. We have a medical program where people come to see me as a doctor and we have a bunch of doctors across the country who use our methods. Um, and that's a medical program that is at 800 calories. And then we have a non-medical program, which is commercially available. It's available on our website, smartforlife.com. It's available on Amazon, on walmart.com and uh, through a whole bunch of other retailers. And that's a, a, a program that the people do on their own 1,200 calories. And they, they can look, go see their own doctor, but they can do it on their own if they're healthy. And they will lose weight, not as fast as the medical program, but they still are very successful. So if somebody wanted to work with you, is it, um, does insurance cover some of this or is it always out of pocket or both? So for the food, it's out of pocket. There are some rare insurance program that will cover the food, but it's very rare. Uh, if they come to see me as a, as a doctor, it depends on the BMI. If the BMI is above 30, most insurance in the country will cover it. If the BMI is below 30, most insurance in the country will not cover it. But they'll but, cover you as, the, as, as being the doctor. I mean, they're, they're normal correct. insurance, but maybe not specific parts of the program. Correct. But, but honestly, when people do a program, it doesn't cost them any money because they're probably spending more on breakfast, lunch, and snacks than what the cooks are going to cost them. That's so they end true. up spending money. That's true. I love it. <laughs> I do. I love that. Um, did we, there was, did we cover everything? I don't want to leave anything out. You're, so we, you're, you, what you've developed and, and the way you help people, we, I think we've touched on most of it. Is there anything like that we didn't cover that, like, that we should talk about? about what you do and how special it is. Yeah, so we also, well, you know, we, we went public about four or five months ago on, we were on the NASDAQ, uh, symbol SMFL. And uh, I have a, a great team that, uh, you know, bought the company for me. I'm still, you know, shareholder and I'm still chief medical officer. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, AJ Cervantes and Don Menton. I think AJ has taken 120 something companies public already. So we are getting a lot of, uh, we got another facility now that manufactures in Miami where we make a lot of supplements. We have, uh, we manufacture about 200 different supplements anywhere from, you know, vitamins to the whole anti-aging group. 
We have a whole bunch of small for life supplements. We also have, um, we're also acquiring another company fairly soon that specializes in greens. Because uh, we're a big believer, like I said, in vegetables. When people don't like vegetables, we can give them the greens in a capsule. Uh, so we're acquiring this company probably in the next week or so. And uh, the company is going because we have a very strong medical here, medical team here, and also financial team here. And we are we are we are planning on manufacturing the U.S. and keeping the supply chain very solid in the U.S. And what Smart for Life has done is we've been able to. Uh, guarantee the supply chain because of our ability to buy product and how much in advance we forecast. So uh, this team, you know, that I'm part of right now at Smart for Life has really been very impressive and I see this going a long way. So we've come a long way from the cookies. We have a, one of the best selling protein bars in Canada. We have a new bar called the Gourmet Protein Bar, which is a lot of our cookie technology in the protein bar. And I'll send you some of those as well. So. Um, we have a whole bunch of products, and uh, and also I have a book. I've been out for ten years. Doesn't sell it. It's also Smart for Life Diet. It talks about the journey, talks about metformin, talks about all the benefits. Me and you talked about. Oh, fantastic! Except intermittent fasting, because I ordered four intermittent fasting studies came out. I think I'm gonna have to update it. That's your next book. That that it's a. Uh... I mean, there's so much I watch, I've watched probably a hundred hours of videos of different people, you know, on YouTube, different doctors and, and different people that talk about it. And I've been doing it for years and combining that with for about five years, I didn't eat meat. Um, and I don't remember you. when I started again, but I did start eating meat and I'm now weaning off of it again. To your point before I have, I never felt better in my life than when I was not eating meat and I was doing the same thing you were doing fish and eggs, but I wasn't eating any meat. It makes it difficult to, to eat sometimes, which, but when I added the intermittent fasting in, I, I'm telling you, my energy levels were like consistently like, like through the roof all day, all night. I was never oh, tired. Yeah, no. I slept good. I felt good. My skin was better, you know? Right. No, I agree with you. Inter intermittent fasting, you feel really good. It's a lot easier people. It's a lot easier than people think it is. It's almost like once you take the psychology out of it, it it's, it, it's really good. And I, you know, for me, when I wake up in the morning, I'm a bit hungry. I have my coffee and by 11 o'clock, I'm, I'm not hungry anymore. I'm you done. forget and, about it. Yeah, you forget you about busy, it. You get know? busy, you start doing something. Right. And, and then four, five o'clock comes in and then, you know, and then, and then what's nice about it, and I discovered it with intermittent fasting when I started doing it, is that the evening meal, you don't pick out as much as you used to. I don't know why, but I just, I'm happy with a little bit of food I've had. It's and true. I go to bed again. I don't, it's, but the day that I eat a breakfast, a big breakfast, Man, I'm I'm eating all day. I'm all day, all, all day. day. So that that there's some a switch in your brain that just the intermittent fasting does. Well, it's incredible. So the other thing, I carry this 32 ounces with. It's got water, and I put a packet of um, electrolytes in it in the morning. Good for you. And I'm I just find that when you sip on this, if I get a little hungry, but before I have my first meal, I didn't eat yet. So my first meal will probably be at two o'clock. Right. I'm, I have one of, so much energy right now. I didn't even eat yet. <laughs> right. One of one of the things people in the U.S. don't get enough because they're not eating our vegetables, potassium and magnesium. Yeah. So we came up with a potassium magnesium supplement to help those people. Um, and it's, I think, one of the best selling supplement on Amazon right now. No kidding. So, yeah, I'm not kidding. It has 3,000 oh. reviews. I don't know. It's just, it, but because people are not eating enough green leaf vegetables, they eat enough green leaf vegetables, put that electrolyte pack and drink enough water, they would be fine. It's it's so simple, but you know, maybe this, we, we do have to wind it down. It, it, it's unfortunate that um, corporate America, you know, they, they, need, they need to make profits, these companies and, and the advertisements that we see and the way food's placed on shelves and stores and the way it, the whole entire system is put together. Yeah, food pornography, we call it. <laughs> it's not designed to, for people to be healthy. It's really, it's sad. It's unfortunate. And it comes down to your home um, and the values you have in your house. And, and, and that's where you can control it, the parents and the children. You right. know? But people have to make it easy in themselves by carrying, you know, that bottle, water bottle that you said. And, you know, yeah. just finding it out. It takes another two minutes a day and you're fine. That's it. That's it. Right. Listen, I, I, uh, I want to thank you for coming on. This was, this was it better than I, I hope for a great conversation and i had the best time talking with you so did i it's such a fun topic like and and 
you we, you delivered a lot. I, I just want to run down a few things. If anybody's catching this towards the end, sugar, cut out the sugar. Uh, simple list of things to do. Vegetables, low sugar, exercise, fiber, protein. I mean, that's easy. Um, if you can throw in some intermittent fasting, even a couple of days a week, uh, if you could not eat for 16 hours, here, it's simple. After you eat dinner at six o'clock, don't eat again until 10 o'clock the next morning. It's not that difficult. Just don't have the snacks after dinner. Go for a walk, right. you know? Uh, caloric deficit, like that's a really important fact. Like you do need to really deal with that. And anybody that says that's not true, we just heard from the source, like it does matter. And these cookies, I, we're gonna, oh, by the way, we're going to put all of the products you have, we're going to put them in the, the description down below when this video gets, um, gets published. And anybody that wants to find out more about them, about your book, we're going to have all the information down below. I'm not going to ask you to list it all right now. Uh, but if somebody wanted to contact you, what would you say is the best way to reach you? So they can, uh, uh, the, my email is uh, drsass at smartfullife.com, D-R-S-A-S-S at smartfullife.com. Uh, our website is smartfullife.com. And uh, we are here, uh, I'm here to answer questions, answer questions every day. If people are having a hard time, feel free to contact me. Don't be shy. That's fantastic. This is like anything else we talk about on this show. It, it does come down. And, you, and this, this, you, you, um, you've shown this today. People need to be humble. They need to hustle. They need to do the work. And it's the same thing with diet. You have to do the work and you have to kind of get out of your own way. Uh, I, had, I spoke with somebody yesterday who was uh, one of the top trainers in the country. And he, he shared something with me, which I had never thought about. And it's, it's, it's capacity. It's like your genetic capacity, he called it. Mm -hmm. you, you have potential. So if you are overweight, and I'm implying to this, if you're overweight, you don't have to settle for that. Like you have potential to not be overweight. Right. And it's not like some sort of sentence. And that's why I think people should reach out to you. And, and uh, I hope we've inspired some people and motivated some people today. So thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. It was a pleasure. Fantastic. And I think, um, I think there might be another show in our future. I want to talk with you specifically about intermittent fasting only for an hour. Sure. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Listen, thank you again. I appreciate it. And I'm really grateful that you took the time. Please. And please send me your address. I'll gladly send you some of our products. Where do you live? Where are you located? Uh, I am in Boca Raton, Florida. Oh, easy. We'll we'll send it right around the corner you. from you. Okay, we'll send you the product. We'll get you get you there. Awesome. Listen, thank you again. Thanks again. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Thank, thank you, Matt. All the best. Bye bye.